Hey guys, today in this video, we're gonna be looking at this 12 volt, 2,500 watt DC to AC power inverter. This is from a company called Viver. They have a lot of products. They sell a lot of different things. They sell motors, they sell cables, they sell EV chargers. They're an all around company. They have a lot of products for sale. So I'm wondering if this inverter is actually gonna be any good. So let's test it today and see what it can do. Now this 12 volt inverter is gonna be meant to hook up to a 12 volt power source, whether that would be a lead acid battery or even a lithium iron phosphate battery. This is gonna convert DC power to AC power in order for you to power your everyday electronics, such as a TV, a fridge, whatever it might be. But these inverters, when they're on and left running, they have something what's called consumption power. So while the inverter is running, but there's no load on it, it is going to consume power. So it's always a great idea to turn the inverter off when you're not using it. One of the ways you can achieve this with this inverter is they have a little remote button here. So more than likely, you're gonna mount this out of the way so you're not looking at it, you're not hearing the fans. As long as there's a little bit of heat dissipation allowed to happen, like you're not enclosing it and locking it into an airtight space, this will need to cool if it's being heavily used. But nonetheless, you have a remote and you have an extension wire that you can run this and mount this anywhere inside of, let's say your RV or in your cabin or wherever you're gonna to wanna to run. Now they also did include some cables but these are rather undersized for the capabilities of this inverter. I would not suggest using the cables that come in the package. These would be great to maybe go from if you were gonna use a solar charge controller and have some solar panels on the roof, you could use this to go from your solar charge controller to your battery, depending on how many amps you're gonna be running through it. This is about a six gauge wire. And for this unit on 12 volts, you're gonna need something like a one aught cable. Now, a one aught cable is rather large and I have some here. So this cable here is what you're gonna be looking to use for a one aught cable. Now, this also depends on the length. The further you go, the larger you're gonna to have to make your cable. For this application, I'm gonna be under five feet. It's gonna be okay for me to use a one aught cable and be able to power this device. And as you can see, there's a slight difference between what you need and what they supply, but unfortunately, they always get this part wrong. So like I had said, Viver supplies a ton of different items. I actually just started walking around my garage and realizing how many items I had. So before I moved to this location here, I was going to install a generator hookup at my old house. So I had actually bought a generator receptacle and I had bought a massive cable. So this is a 60 amp generator cord and I was going to hook this up, but then I moved. Uh, I also have a scale that I use for weighing batteries in some of my battery review videos. And this is also from Viver. And I also purchased one of their car chargers. And this is a EV car charger uh, and it goes from the outlet into the car charger. And I've used this in some of my uh, power station review videos. There's some power stations out there that you can actually use an EV charger to charge really fast. So I purchased this in order to make those videos. I'll leave links in the description below for the website and you can cruise around and see like how many different items they actually have. They have gardening tools. They have a, a bunch of stuff. So I'll leave links down below for that. And with the inverter as well, get a little user manual. And we also get some 40 amp fuses. And taking a closer look at the inverter, this has an aluminum body and that is gonna be for better heat dissipation. We also have Viver, pure sine wave inverter. We have a USB logo and 2,500 watts and continuous power. So that's gonna be a continuous power. This has a 5,000 watt peak power. So that's gonna be when a load initially turns on, it needs a surge of power. On the side here, we have the battery terminal connections. And I actually really like the way that this is. As you can see, these are offset. So your battery lugs have a less likelihood of making contact with each other. We also have a couple of cooling fans. And then on the front here, you can see we have some outlets. We also have the on off, a USB plug-in, which is up to 18 watts, which is a quick charge uh, 3.0. And then we have the communication here for the display. You would plug this into here, route your cable, 
and plug it into the back of here and you can turn the inverter on and off as well as have some information on the readout here. Uh, let's open this inverter up and have a look at the internals before I induce any power to it. Okay, and here is the inside of the inverter. Now, if we start over at the battery cable side, it looks like we have one, two, three, four wires, and I can't tell what size they are. I don't see any labeling on the size of the cable. If I had to guess, I would say it looks somewhere in the area of maybe an eight gauge wire. So it looks like we have four eight gauge wires that run up to the lug here, and this is tight. And then it looks like we also have four eight gauge wire coming off the positive terminal. You can see here we have a heat sink and another heat sink for cooling, some capacitors down here, a few transformers, and we have the fan power wires right here. Coming down, you can see there's the fuses down in there I was discussing earlier. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. Coming over to the AC side here, it looks like we have two wires that are going to be feeding the entire plug board and these look like they're number 10 wire which is sufficient would have liked to have seen maybe number eight wire but these number 10s are sufficient for the load that is going to be demanded from these outlets and it looks like the grounds are just soldered on and connected to the chassis of the device and our one ac wire is soldered onto this board which is soldered onto the board and the black is also soldered onto the board and there's tracers that run out to each outlet you can see this is the display board here with some more circuits everything in here looks clean all the soldering looks good it's nice and shiny so it was brought up to temperature i'll bring it up a little closer just so you can see inside everything looks very clean nice neat and organized now to get the full potential of this inverter what i'm going to need to do is a quick calculation so i need to know how many amps that this is going to be asking for so this is a 2500 watt so if we take 2500 and then we divide it by the nominal voltage of this battery which is 12.8 we get about 195 about 196 amps now this is going to be the AC, the 2500 watts. So the DC side is going to use a little bit more. So I'm going to prepare myself, let's say 210, 220 amps that this is going to be demanding in order to power the 2500 watts on the AC side. So I'm going to be using this Tamgot battery. This is a 460 amp hour battery and it has a continuous discharge capability of 250 amps. So just enough power I can get out of this battery to use this to its full potential. So you need to keep that in mind when you buy these larger inverters. You have to have the power to back it up in order to power. And then next thing you need to worry about is your fuses. Again, I'd be looking at I probably wouldn't run this continuously at 2,500. So I'd probably be looking at using maybe 200 amps. So I'd size my conductors for 200 amps and I would size my breaker or fuse in order to protect the conductor, the wires. You want to fuse and use a break or a breaker to protect your wiring. So you don't want your wiring to overheat and catch fire. That's why you have a fuse or a breaker. So again, uh, I will actually put a chart up that I will use the company out there called Battleborn, put it up here. And this is what I use to kind of gauge my breaker and conductor size. So it's a good information for you guys. So I'll put it up here for you. Take a screenshot if you would like. Now for this video, I'm not gonna install a fuse or a breaker because I'm gonna be here with it. And I don't want to cut the lugs off of this nice cable that I have just for one video. So you will want to put a fuse or a breaker at the battery side. So let's go ahead and hook this up. I have the battery cables connected to the inverter and I have one cable connected to the battery itself. So now what you wanna do, if you're using lithium iron phosphate, just a quick tip, there's no resistance on lithium iron phosphate or very little. So if I was to just directly connect, I would see a big spark come off of here and there's a potential I could damage the capacitors inside the inverter. So I need to slow down that inrush of power. And I've actually recently made a mistake where I didn't properly pre-charge the resistors and actually fried my inverter. And that is why I purchased this one here. It's in order to replace it. Let's go through this process together. Now I'm using what they call a resistor. This is just gonna slow the power down in order to pre-charge these resistors. I happen to be using a 10 watt, 10 ohm resistor. This is a ceramic style. There's other styles out there. 
but all it is is it's just gonna slow the power down. On my initial hookup, I'm gonna want to put one end on here and have this other prong open so I can touch that conductor, but I wanna make sure this inverter is off. That is where I made my mistake last time, is I didn't make sure that this was off. Oh, and it was actually on. So it is now off. Now all I want to do is touch this here, hold it just for 30 seconds. And I would do this at the battery side because the cabling is gonna give you a little bit of resistance as well. We will just hold it there. And then when I go to connect, no spark. And I'll just give this a little bit extra of a tightness. So if everything worked properly, I should be able to power this. Wow, the fans didn't even come on on power up. So this is really temperature controlled fans. That is awesome. Okay, let's see. So now that we're on, I'm not even picking up a standby consumption on here. We are on 13.6. This standby consumption is really low. So the standby consumption so far looks like it is so low that my display on my battery is showing 0, 0, 0.0 current. And I'm not seeing anything coming out of the battery yet. So let's check with, let's check with my meter here. 0 0.3. So it's weird that this can't pick up 0 0.3 amps. So let's see what 0 0.3 amps, how many watts that is. 13.8 on the battery, but 13.6 on here. And this is connected directly to the cells. So that's why it's, you're seeing a 0 0.2 difference. So let's go 3.7, so 10 and a half watts. This has a standby consumption. That is probably the best I've ever seen. We have 10 and a half watts. Let's just say 11 watts even. 11 watts of standby consumption. That's almost nothing, that's amazing. That's actually, I'm actually really surprised. That's really good. So we have 10.5 watts of standby consumption. Okay, let's see what the screen looks like. So you can see there, right now we're off. And if we press it, yeah, there we go. You can see 13.8. See, that says 13.8 on here, and it says 13.6 on this display, which isn't a big deal. It's only off by 0 0.2 volts, so not a big deal. That is really cool. So one thing I need to mention as well, if you're using lithium iron phosphate, you cannot test the amount of battery you have on voltage alone. So I would just ignore this little battery logo this thing here is actually probably going to say full the entire time it's going to be used until it's not because lithium iron phosphate is a little bit higher of a voltage and so it can be tricky. If you're using lead acid batteries, then you can use this voltmeter, but for lithium iron phosphate, just ignore that. Now the display brightness is a bit intense. So if you are mounting this in, let's say an RV, I would probably use electrical tape to cover over top of some of these lights just to dim them a little bit. It's kind of been a trick of mine, just one little strip of electrical tape. If it's not enough, if it's still too bright, just put another piece of electrical tape over top of it just to dim it down a little bit. That's neat, so the display works. Let's hook a load up to it. I wanna hear these fans come on. I have the good old heat gun. Ooh, right now I'm using 74, 76 amps. And this has a watt meter, I, t I believe. Let's crank this up a little bit. So we have 2,317. 19 watts and it looks like the voltage on the output is holding steady oh yeah check that out okay so this is a little better so you can see the screen you can see the battery voltage the frequency and the output so you can see 121 volts and then we have uh zero watts here and our battery icon but again with the voltage sensing i wouldn't uh, depend on that but let's bring it up See the voltage there, we're down to 120. 1,152 watts, let's crank it up. So you can see there, it's keeping the voltage and that's really good, it's keeping the voltage in where it needs to be. And this is the highest setting of the heat gun. And then if we turn it off, you can see it goes to 123, then 121. So it's moderating the output voltage so it's proper. I don't know how many of these inverters I've seen where this voltage on the output will drop off once you start putting a heavy load on it. Let's just go right to full. See, 121, it's regulating the output voltage. I'm actually really impressed with the performance of this inverter and the fans still haven't come on yet. So I'm gonna run this 
until the fans come on. This may take a while, so I'm just gonna jump ahead. 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees uh, Celsius. I'm seeing 22 on the body, 22 degrees Celsius. And on the battery side, we have 171 amps. Okay, this is taking a long time. This is not heating up. So I'm gonna put a little space heater as well as the uh, heat gun. I'm gonna turn up the space heater slowly. Oh, this might trip it. What's that voltage at? Ooh, 113, we're pulling the volts and we're over the 2,500. We're at 2,861. Okay, we are over the rated capacity of the inverter and it's still going. And I don't feel, I don't feel it heating up. Let's turn this down a little bit. Oh, I was, oh, I was like 225 amps on the battery. Oh, there we go, the fans on the back are on now. I'm gonna turn this off real quick. That is quiet. So I'm actually behind the fans, like if I'm off to the side. You can hear how quiet it is. I believe the upper decimal, because it's an adjustable fan, I think the upper was 40 decibels. I'm super impressed with this inverter. Let me, uh, I'm gonna test the pure sine wave capability. Let me get my oscilloscope. Okay, I have my oscilloscope set up here and this is going to show us the sine wave. So let's plug this in. Let's flatten that a little bit. That's a good view. So you can see there, see the nice wave up and down? That's a good wave, that's a pure wave. Now let's turn a load on. And you can see there the consistency and we're under load. Shut the load off. And that is pretty good sine wave. And you can see the voltage up there. We are matching 121. That's showing 121.2. And when I jump the load on heavy, you can see it did drop and then it came back up and it's holding. So it's moderating its output. See it went down to 119 and then back up. Okay, let's see what happens now when I trip it. So I'm gonna run a load that's gonna be too big. You can keep track on the watch there. I think I have to kill power to it to shut it to stop that. So the fault was a little bit difficult to clear. Some inverters, you can just power them down, wait a few seconds, power them up, but this seemed to keep going. So let's try running a fault again. Now this is where it'd be good to have a breaker or a disconnect switch from your battery to your inverter. So if you do have a fault, you can shut the power off and it's a good safety uh, device to have installed. Oh, that time it cleared itself. Do I have power again? Yeah, I do. Okay, so that time it cleared itself. Let's try it again. Okay, I'm off and the fault is consisting. Turn off the power. No, the fault's still going. So with the power off, I turned off discharging on the battery. Turn it on before the capacitors get charged or dis fully discharged. So sometimes the fault will clear itself or you need to actually disconnect the battery from the inverter to clear the fault. And the fans are so quiet. They've come all the way down now. They're just barely on and there's like no noise to them right now. It's slowly ramping down. Well, there you have it. I can honestly say I do like this inverter. It's performed better than anything I've actually tested before. So this is the Viver inverter. I'm going to leave links in the description below. And as always, thank you very much for watching and check out this company. They have everything like they have anything you're going to need. So I'll leave links to that below. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.